So the Bible says all of us are living stones, precious. We are being built what? A spiritual house. And in the book of Ephesians, Paul says that we are being built a spiritual house where the Lord will dwell in us by what? His spirit. So you and I, you are a precious stone. Do you believe it? Sure. So if God represented the people with precious stones, it means all the people who are supposed to be in Christ, they are precious in the sight of God. Amen. And every one of you have a value, something that cannot be bought with any money. You are precious stones, right? Yes, sir. God did not put any stone which was not valuable in that breastplate. All of them are valuable. So why do people many times feel like they are worthless? They have come to Christ. A situation is making them feel like they are nothing in this world. Listen, that is what Satan wants you to know. That is what Satan is whispering in your ears. But anytime Satan tells you that, go and look at the breastplate. Hallelujah. Look at the stones. All the stones are valuable. Yes. They are precious in the sight of God. You are too precious to think that you are not worthy. Tonight, if there is any thoughts in your mind, in your heart, that you are not worthy, listen, let it be deleted. Amen. He has made eternal covenant that will never change with you. Yes. The Bible says, you were in him before the foundations of the world. Yes, the wind came against you today. And it seemed like you fell. It seemed like you were sinking in the water. But I came to announce to you that the righteous may fall, but they shall rise again rise in the name again. of Jesus. Amen. We serve a God. Yes. Everything he does is for a purpose. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy might think that he's sinking you in the water. Mm. But you are a precious stone. Yes. God will give the desire to certain people. You mm. might not go into the water. Mm. But he will give the desire to people. Thank you, Lord. And they say we are going to search for precious stones. Hey. We are going to search for jewels. Hey, they will go in the water and bring you out again. I came to announce to you oh, that the season has come. Yes, Lord. The season of power. Amen. There is a dimension. Power. We are the sons of the living God. Yes. We are the children of Zion and the power works for us. So we are stepping into the dimension which has been revealed to us, which some of the apostles walked in, which Philip walked in. We are stepping into it in this dispensation and we will make Jesus proud. I came to declare to you in the name of Jesus, as the sons of the wicked mature, we will mature with the power, with the knowledge of Jesus, with the understanding of Jesus. Wherever you have been denied, you will not be denied again. Amen. The Lord is putting it in their hearts Amen. to favor you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That contract is yours in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. May you receive miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you who have not given up. The Lord's reward will be greater in your life. Amen. You are showing resilience yes. and it's a character of Jesus Christ. Yes. It's a nature of the Spirit. Because of that faith, let the Lord reward you in Jesus' name. Amen. If the government of Jesus is running on the earth, then he has a caliber of prophet on the earth. Now I came to declare to you in the name of Jesus, you are being translated into the economy of Jesus. In this season, every week will be a testimony for you. Now I stand in the name of the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I declare by the power of God, there is a change for you in Jesus' name. Mountains are moving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your businesses are prospering. Amen. Limitations are removed in Jesus' Amen. name. Every limitation is removed in Amen. Jesus' name. The Lord has seen your heart. Amen. He has seen your tears. Yes. And he has heard your cry. What he will do for you is a miracle. Amen. The earthly process will be interrupted. Amen. For your sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. For your sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said for your sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello everyone, greetings to you all in the name of Jesus. Um, wherever you are, I want to especially welcome you. Uh, I pray that you are doing well by the grace of God. 
and um, uh, thank God that you've you've joined us this evening for a time in the Word of God, uh, so that uh, you are not confused. Today we are broadcasting only from YouTube, and I think it's also on Twitter X. The the, the feed goes to that place, uh, so. Uh, you won't see it on Facebook, so if you if you want to share to uh, people or platforms that other people can be blessed, you are more than welcome. I am not able to share because my my page has been it says it has been unpublished. Uh, the Facebook page has been banned or unpublished, so uh, you are not gonna see the. I don't know how long they have not given me time. If it's forever banned. Um, I'm not sure, but we are going to be doing it from Facebook uh, from now onwards. Uh, sorry, on YouTube from now on, because uh, there's nothing that I can do. I try to reach out to Facebook, but uh, they don't even give me anything to uh, to write or to say. So um, we are going to be using YouTube for now, and I pray that uh, God will also enable our voice um, or enable the word of God to to be heard you know uh, the, what the enemy uh, plans for evil God is able to turn it for our good so I'm believing God to turn this thing for our good in Jesus name so let us pray so that we can we can start this night in Jesus name Father in heaven, we thank you and honor you tonight. We bless you for uh, this opportunity given to us, Father, your people, uh, for me to come to your saints, your people, and share the word of God with them, that we may be equipped together and empowered, that we may produce more fruit, O oh God. Father, I thank you that you are here with us. I thank you that your presence is with us. Lord, as I open my mouth to speak and to teach your word, O oh God, that your blessings will flow unto us and will flow through us. And I pray that your name will be glorified. Your name will be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless you for that which you are doing in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So God bless everyone again. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is John Taylor Anoche, servant of God, coming to you from Ontario, Canada, in the name of Jesus. Um, yes. Uh, sorry, someone is asking uh, if my Facebook account is active. Okay. Yeah, so apparently um, I was, I was uh, reported according to the, the, not, the 10 Facebook is, is saying, um, I've, been, I've been banned or unpublished because uh, many of my fans and people have reported me. So this thing I saw maybe three, uh, three years or four years, more, more than four years ago, because we were here so three years and a bit, almost four years. I saw it, um, and the Lord asked me to save all my videos because they will burn my things. Uh, he showed it to me. Um, He showed it to me, so uh, I didn't know that it will come that quick. I didn't know that it will come so fast. So thankfully, um, if they if they I don't get all my videos, <laughs> it's only those that I've shared on uh, YouTube that will be there. But for the past three years, almost four years, because I've been broadcasting for four years now, four or five years. I started in 2019. And I, I started doing it on YouTube. So all those teachings are gone just like that. And uh, some 
I thank God that a lot of them, Christine, was able to uh, save some. Um, I myself, I also saved some on my laptop. So, um, yeah, we will have to uh, teach all over again. So, this is what he showed me. And I was, I was actually smiling on Tuesdays. I was like, wow. The visions are really coming to pass so quickly. You know, sometimes it will, it will take like um, seven years and six years and a bit. But right now, when he shows, and the thing is coming to pass. So we must know that visions are being fulfilled quickly. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, I couldn't protest, but uh, hopefully the YouTube also will grow, okay? The, the audience on YouTube, you know, it's been a while gradually, you know, gradually uh, we grew to how many, I think we were, are we 3,000 or so? Or 5,001 5, on Facebook gradually. And so hopefully this will also grow and actually will exceed YouTube, uh, will exceed Facebook. So share with people, let people know that they can follow us here. Um, they can, they can well, how, do you, how does YouTube work? Yes, they can subscribe to the page so that when I come online, they will be able to uh, join us. Um, this summer or spring summer, we are going to be busy. I'll be doing some videos. Uh, as I, I think I did about two, th two, three years ago, I was doing some short videos. Uh, I'll be doing such short videos, educate, educative videos about some, some things in, in, in the Bible. And I'll do it from YouTube since there's no Facebook anyways. So uh, what, what hurts me is all my videos are gone. All the videos are gone. That, that is what it's, it's annoying a little bit. And I hope that they will... I will find a way to protest for them to bring, at least give me my videos back. Um, so today we are going to continue. Oh, okay, let me welcome people first. Um, let me welcome those that I see here. Um, so I see man of God, Elijah Chris. Uh, greetings to you. I see a, a brother, a man of God, Mark Manson. Greetings to you. I see Richard. Rich, Richard Kielsen, greetings to you. Madam Lucy Brenda. Uh, Madam Lucy Brenda, I saw you. I saw you in Ghana. So I find, I saw you and I said, like, oh, so you mentioned your name and I said, like, yeah, you are Lucy Brenda Sai. So right now I recognize your face. So anywhere I see you, I will be able to recognize you. Uh, Madam Lucy Brenda. And I see uh, Shakespeare question. Uh, greetings to you. I see Mr. Obed Adachi, greetings to you. Um, Doc Amon, Luis Amon, greetings to you. Uh, Raymond is joining. Uh, greetings, Raymond. Reverend John is Ampa. Um, greetings to you, Reverend. Um, I hope you are doing well um, by the grace of God. Uh, I see Reverend. Benoni and Reverend Gifty from Fort McMurray. Better greetings to you, servant of God. I see uh, Madam Sheila Sowa. Thank you for sharing on, face, on Facebook. Um, I see J Jane. Greetings to you, Jane. I see Ma uh, Madam Esther Naopoku. Greetings to you. Reverend Emmanuel, Thai greetings. Madam Vivian, greetings to you. I said the wisdom is also joining. Eugenia of Fusu is joining. Reverend Johnny Selassie is joining. Uh, I see Opon Opoku, greetings to you, um, Opon Opoku. Uh, and I see <clears throat> Godwin. Greetings to you, Reverend uh, Ojiri. Greetings to you, Mercy Amwa. Robbie Quartes joining. Greetings to you. Um, 
the image makers. Greetings to you. Oh, this is the wife of um, the priest of God, uh, Mr. Zorasta. Great greetings to you. Um, Emmanuel Champon, greetings as well. Mensin Kumi, um, Mr. Mensan. Lassie, greetings to you. Madam Zifa Frimpong, greetings to you. Mon of God and Johnny Jane. Okay. <clears throat> so let me let me say it again. Um, if you are uh, people have sent me a message on Facebook, if I'm broke, yes, on, it's not on my Facebook platform, but I've been able to share the YouTube link on the church, our Worldwide World Ministries uh, Canada um, the site. Okay. I've been able to share it on the World Wide Ministries and Casta, okay, the site. Um, so if you um if you want to watch it from there too, you can. Uh, that's the only place I can share. So <clears throat> today, if you look at the title, it says the place of revelation and we are going to we are going to have a bit of a discussion in the next two hours. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping to finish at uh, six, um, eight. Okay, and I will I will tell you something. Um, this I've been telling, you know, some few people I, I minister to or privately or at the church our church family, and also people I pray with. Um, this month is a good month. Something the Lord has been showing me a series of visions about this month. I'm not talking about even what is ahead this month. There is something that has begun in this month spiritually. And so if you are if you want to if you want to experience something new that Jesus is on is doing on the earth. Seek God this month. I know today is the 13th, tomorrow is 14th. Yeah, it's not too late. If you want to dedicate um, maybe a week of fasting and praying or two weeks, whatever your strength can be or can do, wait on God this month. There is something I've seen and uh, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out. So as I'm talking to you, I'm waiting on God. So I want, I want God's people to also be um, connect to God in a deeper way. Before you do that, though, I will, I will ask you to have the, a purpose. Why are you waiting on God? Why are you going before the face of God? Have a purpose. And uh, what I saw was that um, I saw um, God granting dominion to people. Okay, I can't say I saw many people, but I saw pe some people. And what I also uh, heard was something that he's doing because something has happened on the earth. It will not happen on the earth again or it won't, it won't happen again until Jesus comes. So it means that whatever experiences um, heaven is releasing unto us or graces or things that he's given, he's given unto us for the purpose of empowering and perfecting the saints of God affecting God's people until Jesus Christ come. So I want people to be, you know, usually I don't say a lot of these things uh, because when you are moved to do it by faith, that is where you have your great encounters. But I want, I don't want to be selfish, but I want to tell you that something is beginning this, has begin, begun this month. And if you can, from today, which is, 13th to the 24th or 25th. If you can wait on God, it will be amazing. From today or tomorrow to 25th, you can dedicate some time in, in prayer and fasting, seeking God, having a time, your own um, prayer times, you know, structured and waiting on God, meditating. You will see a lot of things. God will show you things things about his church, his body, what is happening, what it's about to do. I'm 100% sure of that because he's been communicating to me and showing me some things. So um, 
from this time to the 25th, 24th, 25th, wait on God, you will see that something new will begin to unravel in the body of Christ. And remember, uh, anytime God is doing new things spiritually, you will see that the earth will respond in foolishness. The earth will be doing foolish things. When I say foolish things, it's you will see unnecessary uh, fights, war, unnecessary announcement or public, uh, uh, the uh, nations, you know, publishing some wicked laws against the church to cause the church to be scared and to move in fear. All these are uh, examples or proofs that there is something that is happening in the spiritual um, realms that the earth is responding, but the sons of the wicked who will respond, will, they will respond with something that will affect the church. It will affect the livelihood of the God's people or uh, God's church. So we must take advantage of it because this thing that I'm telling you, I don't know, but it's profound. It is, the Lord is elevating his people, you know, he began to speak to me. Today I'm going to talk about from Melchizedek to Jesus Christ, the place of revelation. We are going to share something amazing there. But let me tell you this one, and then I'll come into the teaching. Um, there is something that is happening, okay, in the body of Christ. As uh, we draw nearer and nearer to the coming of Jesus Christ, the Lord is elevating people the lord is i won't say elevate elevation is the right word to use and remember in the book of james uh, god says that he lifts up he, he he brings down the proud he gives grace to the humble right and the book of psalms god says he brings one down and he exalts the other the exhortation, when God exhorts a man, the, uh, it's not just, it will not only reflect in your physical circumstances. What I mean is your, your work, you know, your salary, you, you improve in life. That is one aspect of it. But there is another aspect of it that is very spiritual, right? So when elevation comes, God elevates, it's like you grow in wisdom. You grow in understanding. You grow in influence. You know, elevation comes with all of this. God gives you great influence and he, you impact more people. I mean, your impact becomes greater. You know, it extends across uh, the nations or the world. So as the Lord is elevating and giving uh, dominion and people ascending in dimensions of God's power, you will see that the influence will be greater on the earth. So wait on God, okay? If you wait on God, wait on God that God, you will increase my understanding. I will grow in wisdom. I will grow in knowledge. I will grow in power. I will impact more people. I will, I will have greater influence to bring, draw people to Jesus Christ. These are the things that you can wait on God with. So you find the scriptures in the word of God about these things and meditate on them, you know, meditate on them. And when you decide to fast and pray, as you are, you are fasting, ponder on this, let your prayer line or your prayer topic center around these things. And because the Bible says in Colossians 3 that now that you've been saved, you've been raised from the dead, seek the things that are from above, where Christ is seated. So when we seek the things from above, which is God's wisdom and grace and everything, it causes our exhortation. It's, uh, we are uh, we are we are exalted. We are um, the Lord lift us up above things. You know the things that will put people down. You see that you, it's like you've passed that threshold. You, you you are not affected by it because there is a growth. There is an experience. There is an exaltation. And also when that happens, you will see that when your influence increases or becomes greater, your your challenges also becomes greater but when your challenges become greater so are your protection your the angels God's eye and the protection of becomes greater so then you move with power you move with great power and glory of God so 
we are not going to diminish in God's glory. We are not going to diminish in God's power, but we are going to increase and we are going to grow. So um, I, I want to encourage you that you can take that step. Today, I want to share something with you, which is um, the place of revelation in the body of Christ. And um, we are talking about um, it in this perspective. Um, we are going to talk about priests and kings, okay, priesthood and kingship, priesthood and kingship. And if you see my, my subtitle, you will see that I am, I am talking about Melchizedek to Jesus. And I'm going to ask some questions. We are going to learn together, okay? Um, let today be interactive, you know, don't feel shy. So I will go to the book of Hebrews. I will start from the book of Hebrews, okay? Uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. Let's learn something together. <clears throat> so I will read from verse 1, okay? The Bible says, for this... Now, before I read uh, Hebrews, let me go to Genesis. Genesis. Because Genesis is the beginning of this thing. So, please forgive me. We will, come to, uh, we will come to that place. But let me go to Genesis first. So, in Genesis chapter 14, when Lot and his family were uh, kidnapped or became a captive, and our, uh, our father Abraham took certain men from his home and went to rescue them. The Bible says Abraham rescued Lot and he brought Lot and he had some men with him who took spoils of what uh, they got from the other kings. And so when we go to the verse 18, um, there was an encounter, an encounter between a man called Melchizedek and Abram. And the man blessed Abraham. Abraham, who be later became Abraham. Now, we are going to learn about something. I know that you and I, many of us have heard about or many things about this man, Melchizedek. Some people say he's this, some people say he's that. But we are going to, we are going to go to the scriptures and, you know, let the word of God speak to us. And then we ask questions, we explore together. Okay, that is the best learning. So, uh, Genesis 14, verse 18, verse 18, the Bible says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. The first thing that we will talk about is that the Bible says that this man or this Melchizedek, he's king of Salem or Salem, Salem. And then he brought a substance or an item, which is what? Bread and wine. And the Lord also further reveals that he is the priest of God. So Melchizedek is both a priest and a king. Now, for my, my small knowledge or my small knowledge, when I meditate and, you know, I've studied this subject for a while, but, you know, as I meditate almost every time, a lot of questions come. And some of the questions that had come before prior is this. Uh, Melchizedek is a king. Now, who made him a king? Okay, who made him a king? Was he born a king? Or he was made a king? And who made him a king? And the Bible says he's a priest of God Most High. Who made him a priest? Because we know that uh, for Aaron to become a priest, the instructions of the priesthood and the anointing of the priesthood, someone had to pour oil on Aaron and anointed him as a priest, okay? So who made Melchizedek a priest and who made him a king? And also, every king has a subject. Every king has a people they rule over or they reign over. So you are a king, you must have the people that you are ruling 
uh, over, uh, which is your subject. So who are the subject of Melchizedek? Because he does not just have a title king and a title priest for the sake of titles. He must, he must have something that he's doing. He must truly be a king and priest. And if you are a king, uh, who are your subjects? And if you are also a priest, uh, you must have a people, you minister, you represent. Because the concept of a priesthood, as we have come to learn from the scriptures, is that you kind of mediate between God and the people. Okay, so if he's a, if he's a priest, who does he minister um, or represent? Okay, mediate. Okay. And he, he blessed Abraham. He blessed Abraham, and this is the blessing. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Okay, so this is the first place that this man was introduced to us from scriptures. We were told that he's a priest um, and also he is a king. And actually his, his full name, Melchizedek, has a meaning. Okay, um, it has a meaning and the meaning itself is profound. The meaning itself is profound. So this is where a lot of people and a lot of uh, servants of God, uh, we, we, we have preached and we have said different things. But today, we hope that the scripture can help us understand the identity of this man, the, who he truly is in the scriptures, as the Bible says. So remember, if he's a king, where are his subjects? And if he's a priest, who does he mediate? or between, who are the people that he ministers unto and for? Are we good together? Is the question, are you following, are you, are you going with me? Um, these are the things that, you know, in the past, and if I've studied, when I study about this, I have. You know, I don't think I have talked about this man in a teaching before. Um, maybe not on social, uh, so Facebook here. I might have mentioned him one or two places but I don't think I've fully talked about him now because when you look at the subtitle I say from Melchizedek to Jesus Christ and from there we will learn something about our Lord Jesus and even about us as God's people okay that is why you must have those questions or those things in your in your mind now when we go to the book of Hebrews 7 the author or the word of God speak further about this man of God. Um, and we want to learn about it. We want to hear what the word of God says concerning this one. So Hebrews 7 from verse 1. The word of the Lord says to us that, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave him tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness and also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. So his, his, the name, his name, it means king of righteousness and king of peace. Okay. That is what the Bible is saying here. So the man's name itself is a mystery, okay? Um, his name itself, my, uh, God is what? Peace, or my king is peace, and my king is righteousness. So his, his name is about righteousness and peace, okay? Righteousness and peace. Um, and the word of the Lord continues to reveal something about this man. Okay, uh, meaning king of peace. The verse 3 says, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither the be beginning of days nor end of life, but made 
I'm stretching the maid for a purpose. Made like the Son of God remains a priest continually. So if this man does not have a mother or father, then his kinship, he was not born into kinship, but he was made a king. Because the Bible tells us that he is made like the Son of God. So he was not born, he was made by God. And God crowned him a king, and he made God crown him or anointed him a priest. Now, where does he function? Because he doesn't have a mother or father, which automatically eliminates him from those on the earth. It actually eliminates him from uh, be, being counted as sons of men or the sons who are on the earth. So then people who have preached that he was a, a king in some Jerusalem, somewhere in the east, in the olden times, it's all fabrications, it's stories, it's tales. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's not true. And we want to understand if he doesn't have mother or father, has, doesn't have any genealogy, that means he was made like one person, made. He doesn't have any genealogy. We can't find his father. We can't find anywhere he is from. So God spe uh, specifically made him for a purpose. Okay. And he is not among the sons of men because all of us, for me, I can trace my genealogy or I can find my grand. I, I know my grandfather. I, we can trace my root. But he, there's no root for him like that. And the Bible tells us that he was made like the son of God and remains a priest continually. So can I submit to you and I, or you, everyone here who is listening to me, that there are things in, in the heavens that we do not yet know and we do not understand. Um, anybody who says they understand everything that is in heaven, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they truly are just playing with your feelings. Because there might be things that when we go to heaven, you and I are going to be shocked about. Okay, We are going to be shocked about and, uh, and ask that, wow, is this? Because the question is, see, this is where sometimes I want to continue to open, you know, bring something for discussions, open our minds a little bit. Now, if he's a priest, then is it like he's a high priest, a priest of God? It's, does he minister alone in the heavens or does he have people who also assist him in his ministration? Remember that the Lord God Almighty is the one that gave Moses the pattern to come and establish on earth. That pattern is what Aaron ran with, and it was according to a pattern in heaven, because in the book of Exodus, uh, when the Lord God, after they set up everything, he told Moses that, um, verse to, Exodus 25, he said, see to it that you make everything, you set up this tabernacle and everything according to the pattern that has been shown you in heaven, according to a pattern shown you in heaven, or pattern shown you when you were, you were on the mountain. Um, Exodus chapter 25, let me show you, let me read that scripture quickly. I don't want to leave anybody confused. Um, I, I usually like to flow, but since there may be new people here, so I, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, Exodus 25, 8 and 9. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. So the furnishings, everything, the tabernacle itself, and also the priesthood, obviously everything was given to Moses, and Moses had to do it according to God, according to what God instructed him. So the question is that, if on the earth, God gave on the earth, the pattern that we use on the earth is that there will be Aaron and he will be assisted, hear this carefully, Aaron he, and he will be assisted by uh, other priests, okay? Is that what is in heaven? Is that what is in heaven? If it is not what is in heaven, where did we get, what pattern 
is there more patterns in heaven that Moses was given one of them, which we, we saw in the shadow, which is according to the law, the Levitical priesthood. So if there is more, then perhaps when we go to heaven, then the Lord will show us more. But if the pattern is no more, but there is one pattern, then the question is that, are there other people there who are also like priests, like the ones that assisted Aaron in heaven? Are there something like that? And if he's a priest, then priests must minister unto God and unto a people, minister to people, because their priesthood is you first minister to God and you minister unto a people. So which people does he minister unto? After he ministers unto God, we know that he was made, so God made him. So which other people does he minister to? And what goes on? Which type of, um, where is his territory, his dominion? Where does he function as a king and also as a priest? Now let's go further. Maybe Hebrews can help us understand better. I hope we are going together. I haven't confused anybody. I'm just asking questions. We are learning together. We are just asking questions and, you know, some of them doesn't need any answer, but uh, rhetoric, uh, rhetorical questions. So verse, verse 4, okay. Verse 4 says, Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithe from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithe from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. So this is profound. The man did not reject what Abraham gave to him. And that's what we are learning here. That he received the tithe from Abraham. He does not have a father, mother, no genealogy. Yet he received something from Abraham. And then blessed Abraham. And blessed Abraham. Now, as we continue to read further, Scripture will tell us where this man's priesthood is or where he functions because uh, if you are a king um, in africa or let me just go to europe where all of us know uh, if you mention the queen who was who has passed everybody knows that she was the queen of england so we have a king now when you mention him people who associate him his dominion is in england and the territories perhaps he conquered because every kingdom um, expands by conquest. When you conquer a territory or a place, then it is added to your dominion. It's added to your, your, your kingdom. So we know the king um, that he reigns, he, where he reigns from is in England. And he has his palace in the, um, the royal palace there. And, and so... We know he has several territories where he won and all of that. So the question that I ask is that if he's a king, he must have a territory. He must have, have a dominion, a place of his dominion, a place where um, um, he reigns from. And the Bible says Salem or Salem. And where is Salem? Okay, that is the first thing. So now verse 7 says this. Verse 7 says, Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better, meaning Abraham is lesser. He is the father of all nations. He is the one that had promises. But when he came in contact with this Melchizedek, the word of the Lord is telling us that Abraham is lesser before Melchizedek, meaning he is greater. He is greater. Now, and then he blessed Abraham. Okay, and then verse 8 says that here mortal men, which is in the domain of men, which is the earth, the earth where we live. So the Bible is specific here where we live, where mortal men live, here men receive tithes 
but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. So the question is, where is the there that this man lives or this man is functioning and he received tight? So wherever it is witnessed that he's alive and received tight, okay, it can't be the earth because he says there, here is here earth. And there is a place called there, and we will know from scriptures where it is. I know the place is in heaven, but heaven has, uh, we have the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heavens. So where does this man reign from? And what is happening there? What, find, what, what takes place there? You see, a lot of, a lot of us, because of, uh, all of us are afraid, many, uh, I, I would say uh, all of us, you know, anything that we don't read or we, 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 if I don't find it in the Bible, don't come and tell me, okay? But there are questions when we read in the scriptures that can come as a result of reading it. So, uh, one of them is what we are discussing. And when we go to another chapter or another text of the Bible, we will see some of the answers. We will see some of the answers and it will help us better understand what God has been communicating to us from this Melchizedek to Jesus, what I'm talking about. Okay. So the Bible said there, he receives what? Them. Of whom it is witness that he lives. So if his witness that he's still living in 21st century, 2024, I'm sure that that's not the year of heaven or the year in the calendar of God at this moment in heaven. They must have their own system. It is witness that he lives and there he collects. Who is paying the tithes to him there? Who pays? The Bible says that here mortal men receive them, but there he receives them. So who is paying tithes to him? And what, what kind of tithe is being paid there? This one... I don't think it's a subject that um, pastors will want to discuss, especially if we were, as soon as you bring any question, you say, keep quiet, you don't understand. I don't want to talk about it. Then you will shut you down. This one invites conversation. It doesn't invite speculation. I don't like speculation. It invites conversation. It makes us, for me, when I read things like this or I meditate on things like this, it, it, it drives me to, to seek God, Okay to know some things for myself first, because it's not everything that I will be comfortable to share with people, even if it is revealed further to me, because we are living in a generation where when, some, when you are, the Lord shows you a revelation, something important is shown to you, and you, in your foolish mind, uh, you, let me use myself, in my foolish mind, if I want to come and share so that other people can understand or see, then... People are going to call you, you, hey, you are this, you are that, you know, and it's going to create unnecessary tension, unnecessary things. So some things are just meant to be kept. Just like Apostle Paul, he says that he was not permitted to share some things. Up to now, nobody knows what he was not permitted to share. He died with it. So it, when I, I learn something, some things like this, what happens to me is that it drives me to inquire, okay? It brings me to the place of inquisition, it drives me to the place of seeking God to understand things for myself first. For me, I always study and meditate and teach and uh, inquire of God for myself first. I want to understand much more than anybody. That is my, 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 my heart. I want to know God. I want to understand him. I want to understand his kingdom, the kingdom I belong to. I want to, I want to experience him. So everything that I am uh, driven to do is to know him for myself first so that I can testify of him to others. I can share him to others. And when I'm sharing, it's not like I'm reading a script or I'm following something. I am speaking by my revel the revelation I have of Jesus unto the sons of men. So then this thing, it tells us that there is much more we do not yet know which is in heaven. And that is why I believe that when we go, Jesus comes to receive us and brings us to heaven. There is much more we will, we will understand, much more we will know, which we did not know here. But 
concerning what has been written to us there, we must all strive to understand it because there's much more we do not yet know. And the Bible says that the secret of the Lord is with them who fear him. For it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but to search out a matter is the glory of kings. Now, the writer of Hebrews would have had revelation about this subject before he wrote about it like this. Who witnessed that the man lives? Who, who witnessed? There, there would have been one or two or some people or one person who would have shared the account or would have shared something he had witnessed about this being or this pers personality. It is witness. So if you talk about it as witness, therefore somebody had, had a revelation of this personality. And they wrote about it to us, as I said. So in our day, if you are someone who loves to seek God and seek truth, it will, it will make you inquire from God, inquire of God. God, I want to understand. Okay. God, I want to understand. Uh, Eugene says, and why did he leave there to come and receive tithe here? Good question. I like that. This is when I teach on Wednesdays, you know, when I used to, you know, have the board. These are the questions that we, 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 we go through. We just want to understand. And then we go through scriptures together. Okay. Why did, why did he come here to receive them? And that is why when we talk of givings, we must understand, okay? We must understand that God is spirit. He has ordinances. They are ordinances of God. That, see, a lot of us, every pastor, preacher, preaches according to the level of their revelation. That one, never forget it. I keep saying it for a purpose. You see, they are ordinances of God. There are some ordinances of God. As it is here, it is in heaven. You can't change it. You see, the ordinances that were given to our fathers by faith, the law coming, the introduction of the law did not nullify the ordinance. Hmm. But in our days, we have men who do not understand ordinance, who have not had, who have not had revelations of these things. So they, they automatically, they say that if there were things were practiced in the law by the Hebrews, then it, it, Jesus has come, so there is it, it, no more. We don't need it no more. But how about the ordinance that was practiced? Because Abraham never lived by any laws of Moses. He lived according by faith. He was justified by faith. He, he and his sons, Isaac, Jacob, they all served God by faith. It was when they went to Egypt, the Bible says that they learned of the Egyptians. So God gave them a law and the law was to help them bring them to the place of promise, where they promised. Until the Christ will come, who will bring them back to the faith? Who, who will bring grace to them? Because their fathers walked with God by faith. But they went and learned from the Egyptians, and so their hearts became darkened. And, but God had to never let go save them because he promised. And so the Bible says that the law is a tutor, the law is a guardian, bringing all of them to the Christ who shall justify all men by faith. So in the Bible, in the book of uh, Job, for instance, God questioned Job and asked him that, can you bring the ordinances of God from heaven and can you establish their dominion on the earth? Okay, do you understand? Let me find the scripture for you. Okay, so this is... Uh, yeah. Job chapter 38, verse 33. Job chapter, chapter 30, 38, verse 33. God says, do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? So there are certain ordinances or their ordinances of God that their dominion must be what set upon the earth. So in, in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulder and what Jesus comes to do is this. Hear the word of the Lord. Okay. So that you understand that, you see, because we have, we have not understood certain things, we have confused the body of Christ. That's why the body of Christ is in such a, a, a huge turmoil right now. Now, I will read something for you. Okay. He says that, uh, Isaiah 9, 
as yana on as a child is born on as a son is given the government will be upon his shoulder that his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace verse 7 says that of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with what judgment and justice from that time forward and even forevermore. So there is something that Jesus is establishing on the earth. When he says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on the earth. The will of God is not just about what I am supposed to fulfill. Part of the will of God is the sons of men understanding the ordinances of God and establishing it upon the earth in the church, in the body, in the kingdom of God. But because many of us do not understand and we, we, we don't have revelation, we are destroying everything. We are destroying everything. In our day, it is even it's scary or it's, it's a bit scary. Not everybody will be, because many people enjoy the, the social media things. But there are certain things when you share with people who don't understand, they are going to insult you. They are going to say all sorts of things, but nobody cares anyways. But it will even, it, what is supposed to be a blessing, a pearls to help people to understand what is in the word of the Lord, help them. It doesn't contradict it. It actually reveals more. People are going to attack it and they will cause many people to even leave the faith. So I think that sometimes it is best to keep some things and then we all must seek God for something. If you seek if one person has been able to seek and God has given to them, why can't we also seek? Now, the writer of Hebrews, who, was, who, which, who this uh, revelation was given to him to write further about this man, he's a man. So if God is revealing something to another man, that means that revelation is no secret anymore. That revelation about this man is no secret because it, it has been revealed to a man. So that realm of revelation is open. So um, another person can seek and seek and seek and seek and God will open things to them. And that they can understand a lot of these things, I'm telling you. For, for instance, there are certain things I've seen in my life in Revelation that nobody... I didn't get an angel to explain to me what I was seeing. I don't, I'm not blaming my angel who, who ministers to me. But in my life, there are certain people in my visions or the revelations I have. They are, they are certain elderly men, okay, who I will see, especially if I am brought to a place. I am brought to a place. I will see them. And they wear this beautiful garment. Okay, it's not white. It's I don't, it's not like you know what the one that comes all the way down like the white one. This one, they have inner garment underneath. All right, but they have this thing like the Indian garment or like a very soft garment, gold. Sometimes it's very interesting, and they they cover, they robe themselves, and they have a belt around them. I have seen such people more than several times. I can't even count it. And anytime they, I see them, they always know me. <laughs> and they, will, they always also will reveal things to me or they will, they will ask me questions. They will ask me, John, why is this happening here? And I'll say, I don't know. And they will say, uh, they will say look. And then I will see the video or something like how the thing unfolded. Okay. All these people, we don't say, why are they in the Bible? Like, we know of angels coming to minister unto people, and we see that when angels come, you see they are wearing white. You know, many people say they are wearing, they have wings and they are coming. Unfortunately, the angels who, minister, who, have, who have ministered to me, I have not seen the ones with wings. I, I hope I get to see so, such, such ones. Maybe when they are coming to me, they hide their wings. They can transition, so perhaps they, they do that. But I have not seen, you know, the mention of such people, but I've also been brought to a realm which I believe was somewhere in heaven. I don't know where it is in heaven, but somewhere where I saw these people also, like I saw, and they even talked to the angel who was who brought me there. They were speaking to the angel and asking them question what Elohim said. But the question is, who are they? 
Who are they? And what do they do? If you are, if you are not shown further, you will not know. You only say it's a vision. And whatever they told you is what you carry. But you don't necessarily know all of them. So for me, I believe that there is much more that we do not yet know and understand. Maybe it has not been permitted for us to you know, know it in detail, but perhaps when we go to heaven, we shall, we shall get to know of them. Or maybe, perhaps, we have not, we have not what, knocked enough. We have not really knocked on the door and knocked and knocked. We have not had the sons of men who have done that. Or perhaps the sons of men who have done that, they were afraid to share some of these things. And so, so that, uh, or because they were afraid, what people would say, what people, how people would take it, they died without sharing it. It could be one of these. So there are ordinances of God. There are things of God that God wants to establish on the earth. God wants to have its dominion go on to be established. But because of our, um, our faith or where we are, how we have been, it is, it's like we are not able to comprehend or we are not able to go further to receive more. Because I'm not saying receive what is, not in, uh, what is contrary to scripture, but some of the things that are mentioned here and there, I believe there is a full context. There is a fullness of all things. There is a fullness. And so perhaps if we, God shows mercy, he can show us a lot. Now, when you are studying this and somebody says, man of God, it's not necessary. I believe, I understand. I understand your, your heart. I understand your point. You see, where did Moses, how did Moses get to write Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus? Moses was in Egypt. Moses was in he was born in Egypt, raised several hundreds of years before after Abraham died. The Bible said they will be in slavery for 400 years, and after God will judge them. The father died, they went to Egypt. The, uh, Abraham died, Isaac reigned, Isaac had children, uh, Esau and Jacob, they reigned, and then um, Jacob had the 12, and then they went to Egypt for 400 years. Everything God says, so their fathers had already died a long time ago. And so Moses comes, and then Moses writes this book and brings it to us. God makes him see the beginning of when and how he did all these things. And he wrote to us. That means God is able to cause a man to go see things which he has done or which has happened. God is able to cause men to see it. And why would I believe that? I believe that because I have been made to see some things like that. Personally about some people's lives and personally about the things in the Bible. Uh, I was brought to see some people in the Bible, which I read all the time. I saw them in their work. So that I was like, wow, it's no joke. These things are real. Where you see them, it's as if you were in that age. You were in that era and you were seeing them. Mahatoro Hosha. You were seeing them. So, I don't know. Maybe this generation, our time, we talk more, but we don't... We, we, we don't do the action. That, it could be. The social media hype says more, but uh, spiritual, we don't have the spiritual hype. Because Daniel and, because look at Daniel. When Daniel prayed, after Daniel prayed, the, the Bible says, the, the angel came and says, from the day you humbled yourself, Daniel 9, to understand these things, a word was released. And I've come to tell you what shall befall you even in the future. So it was the humbling of oneself, Daniel, that caused Gabriel to come to show him about what you and I are now relying on as what? Our scriptures, scriptures to know the, the Antichrist. Daniel was waiting on God for that, that three weeks. Gabriel came and says, from the day you humbled yourself to understand, to seek God to understand, your words were heard and I've come to give you the skill, the understanding of these things. And he spoke about the seven, uh, the, the one week prophecy and the desolation that will cause, the abomination that will cause desolation, which Jesus Christ, our Lord came and he spoke and made reference to that. When you read the book of Daniel and understand, let them, the person flee. But how many of us read the, the Daniel book, uh, prophecy in Daniel 9, understand it? Not many. 
But Jesus said, when you read Daniel and you understand, let the reader flee. So Jesus, who is our Lord, is telling us that there was there is something Daniel was uh, communicating to us that when you see it, the, what must what must uh, a, what a Christian must do is that a Christian must go for a cover. But it's not everybody that sees that. But the one with the understanding, the one who made all things, says that what I revealed or what I sent Gabriel to tell Daniel is that when you see the sign, run away. And people were probably standing there like this. Hey, really? Is that what is there? But you can tell that when Jesus made reference to, he was telling us that I have given you even the solution. I've given you the pattern. I've given you the plan. I've given you what you must do when you see this sign. If had Jesus not made reference to it, we, many people would not have taken it serious or even gone to read what is in Daniel. But when he made reference to it in, in um, uh, Matthew 24, then he's telling us that I have given you the solution. I've given you what you must do. And what you must do is in Daniel. I thought it's the New Testament. Why is he telling us that what we must do is in Daniel? I thought the Old Testament is past. I thought all these things, uh, the prophet, our past, there's nothing. In, we are just, but he was telling us that, that a season comes, a time comes that what you must do has already been revealed in the book of Daniel. So, it makes us understand that there are certain things that when we go deeper and we seek deeper, we will understand. And listen, I, 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 by the mercies of God, I understand what I'm saying. I will say that by the mercies of the living God, I understand what I'm saying. And because it was this kind of desire to understand why I went before God to understand, to know what 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 means. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It was this same desire. I prayed, I, I, I inquired of God, and he showed me. And he showed me how the things will happen on the earth. And I even saw names of players, key players, and nations where, how these things will unfold on the earth. He showed me, but it is not in the Bible. What is in the Bible is that uh, Apostle Paul says, don't you remember? Apostle Paul was telling the writers, the, Thessal the Thessal Thessal Thessalonians that, don't you remember that when I was with you, I told you these things. He was reminding them that I've already mentioned this thing to you. I've told you this guy. I've told you when the Antichrist comes, what he will do. But in our day, how do we know it? The, those church did not write books for us. They did not write series, bestsellers. We don't have bestsellers of the church. There's a Thessalonians church. Any of them writing bestsellers, which has been kept and brought to our attention so that we know what Apostle Paul told them concerning this man of sin, concerning the son of perdition. He says, don't you remember? I told you these things. What did he tell them? In our day, what we have is that he says, our gathering together to Jesus will not happen until the man of sin is revealed, uh, the one who opposes and exalts himself above everything that is called God. Jesus will come and he will consume them, and then there will be people who will fall away and follow him and all of that. That's what we know. But as to where he will emanate from, when he, I, won't, I won't talk of the when, but where he will emanate, and then who his personality will be, will he be this, will he be from here, will he have this personality, will he have this color, will he have this, this, we don't know. So then if a son of man, somebody says, Jesus, I want to understand what Paul understood. I want to know what Paul understood. Do you think Jesus will, will, will say that? No, I will not show you. Meanwhile, Apostle Paul knew about some things and shared with the church in Thessalonians, uh, the Thessalonica people. He shared with them. So what will, why would Jesus deny us also that privilege or that knowledge? Which other church have come and died and gone, which they knew and we don't know? So that is what, what made me say, ah, if, because Jesus opened the seals, so the seals are open. If the seals are open, I can, I can seek God, I can go in God, and even if it take me one year, even if it take me six months, one month, I will wait, I will continue to press until that revelation comes to me, because it will help. If Jesus had not mentioned Daniel, I'm telling you that many of us will not have known what to do. Even the day will happen and some of us will not still know what to do. 
Jesus said in Matthew 24, when you see this thing flee, many will not flee, many will rather be coming in the city. So how do the church have these revelations or move or understand these things so that we are in it, we are in a, it favors us. It favors us. So I don't want to sidetrack a lot, you know. I want to stay on the topic. So let me come back to the book of Hebrews. So in the book of Hebrews, chapter uh, 7, 8, where we are reading, it says, Here, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them. There he receives them. So how are the pain of things in heaven like? Where this man is, how does it look like? The bringing of the tithes to him, the man who received them, how is it like? What do they give? What kind of tie do they give? Because if the blood has one, one blood has been shed for once and for all, and there is no sacrifice. So there's no, I believe there's nothing that like that here. So what are they doing there? This is to tell you that when God says we have realms in, in heaven, it is true. And the place must have a lot of activities that you and I, we don't know. Many of us, we have imaginary place, like we'll be suspending in the air. Heaven is like we suspend in the air and we fly. And then we ask that I want jollof rice. And then jollof rice come and it's on the plate. And then you begin to eat standing in the mid air, eating your jollof rice. And you, if you want fufu, you call fufu. You know, when we're young, Sunday school stories. They say when you are, when you go to heaven and you want fufu, you know, what you have to do is you just, as soon as you think of fufu, and whatever meat and soup, it just appears. We don't know if you're going to sit down or you are standing in the mid-air and you are just eating your fufu. And then afterwards, who comes and takes the plate? Nobody knows. You leave the plate in the air. The plate has eyes and it flies away. <laughs> Sometimes, this is what uh, some of us imagine. I remember when I was in school, um, I think it was a biblical theology or hermeneutics class. A friend of mine, we were talking about heaven, and um, he plays soccer. <laughs> and we were, we were discussing something that had to do with heaven. And he said that he stood up, lifted his hand. We thought he was going to ask some questions, like something very, very serious. Nobody was expecting that joke. He said, in heaven, he's very sad that he's not, he's not, get, he's not going to get to play soccer. But because... His hobby, he loves soccer, he, like, he watches soccer, everything is soccer. So he's very sad that perhaps none, none of the angels or God will not accommodate soccer players, those who love soccer as a passion and everything. And he will go to heaven. He says he will go, but he doesn't. And I'm like, why does this even come into your head? He's like, well, I, I don't want to give up my passion. Anyways, so we, we all think that there's it's like an imaginary place where we are suspended in the air. That is why some people preach and teach that the two witnesses, they, they will be standing in the air. They will move. They will fly from one mid of heaven to the, another mid of heaven. And they are telling the people, preaching the gospel in the air. Our concept of these things are, 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 are sad. And it's, 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 it's the problem. Okay, Jesus said, Many shall come from the east, the west, the north, the south, and sit down. They will sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom, and feast. They will come, they will join, they will come, and they will sit down, and they will feast. They will feast. Jesus, the Bible says he overcame and sat on a throne. He says the 24 elders, they sit on a throne. It's not everybody. They are not hanging and suspending in mid-heaven. Mid it's, it's a whole life. It's a, a place with its life. There are activities that goes on. That is why when sometimes when we are privileged for God, Jesus to show us few part of it, we are very happy. I myself, I get very, very happy. But when you share it with somebody, they get annoyed or mad. They say, if it's true, why haven't I seen it? Why, why am I, why are you the one who will say it? Why, if, why is Jesus not showing to everybody? That is not what scripture says, that Jesus will show everything to. No, he says that, knock, when you knock, you shall be open. Seek, you shall find, right? 
uh, ask, it shall be given. So it is the one that asks that is that 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 is given. It is the one that knocks that is open to. It's the one that searches that finds. If you don't search, you don't find. If you don't knock, nothing will open to you. So somebody who is every day knocking on the doors or the realms of God, knocking that God, I want to experience, I want to enter, I want to see this, I want to experience this. Do you think that you, if you are not doing anything every day, you are just enjoying your life, what God will reveal to them will be the same? No. We must be, we must, we must be uh, people of integrity. God is a, is a righteous judge. He does not judge by what he sees or hears, but he judges righteously. He says that, he conceals a matter. He, in his own wisdom, his power, conceals a matter. To search out the matter is the glory of kings. So he, man must move in that, must be inquisitive, must be curious in the things of God, to search out, to meditate, to inquire, so that the door will open unto them. When the door opened to John in the Revelation chapter 4, he heard a voice that says, come in here. Come, and when he entered, he saw the thrones of the 24 elders. He saw the four living uh, creatures. He saw the throne of God in the midst and angels all around. And he heard them speak. He heard them worship. If he had not entered that building, he had not entered that realm or that place, if the door was not standing open and was told to come in, there is no way John would have seen that, uh, Apostle John, and written to us this things. No. That means we must, it is our quest, our desire. Some people, they, their dreams, daily dreams, is not to know the things of the spirit like that. Their dreams is that maybe I want to be, I want to have a good marriage. I want to have my, I want to play with my children. I want to be successful. I want to be this. So they are the, when they dream, they dream of such things. But there are some who are dreaming every day. They, they want to experience what no man has experienced. They want to see what no man has seen. They want to understand what no man understands. They, 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 they think about it in the daytime, in the afternoon time, in the night time. They are inquiring, searching out scriptures to understand. So don't, don't think that it is going to be the same with you no the desires are different when you the bible says that those that yearns and search those that yearns if you yearn after righteousness you shall be filled those that are hung, hungry and testing for righteousness they shall be filled whatever you test for god will fill you if you are testing for revelation he will give it to you you must test you must hunger for it he will, he will give it to you but if you don't test god is not the one who likes to push 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 things on people he is a very diplomatic God. He draws near to us and he tells us, draw nigh to me. If you draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. If you come closer, I will come closer to you. So if you want God to come closest to you, closer, you begin to draw closer. You begin to move. You begin to pray like never before. You begin to fast like never before. Fast things you have not done before. Let him speak to you and say, Lord, I want to seek you in this way. I want to understand in you. I want to also understand revelations and receive them. Things that... You see, people will say it is stupid. I'm not saying go do something deadly, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But if you fast, let's say the, the highest fasting you will ever do in your life is uh, 6 to 3 or 6 to 4. Say, Lord, I'm going to break record. I'm going to go to 6 to 6. Or Lord, I'm going to break record. I'm going to go to 6 to 9. Everybody has been given an ability to do something. Okay, if your ability is not given to go dry fasting, don't do dry fasting. Dry fasting, its whole self is education itself. It's, it's a whole education. Because if you don't break well after the dry fasting, you can get sick and something bad can happen to you. So you must learn these things before you go into it. So somebody who is always, you see, is the, Jesus is a righteous judge. That's what I want to say. He's a righteous judge. And he said, Ask, and you shall be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will open. So the things of revelation is it's in twofold. You seek and you knock. So the knocking is when you keep knocking and nobody responds to you in heaven, you don't stop. Because if you stop, you're not getting anything. You will not enter the door. You will not go through the door. So if I am seeking something, I am knocking, and the Lord has not responded to me, if I give up, I give up at my own uh, peril. I give up at my own disadvantage. But I will keep knocking until the one who is in the room comes and opens me. 
even if he comes and he says, I will not let you enter. I know that I, I now have understanding of those who are in the door or those who are in the building or those who are in that room. I must also see. I must also enter. I must also experience. So I will knock until Elohim or whoever angel is responsible say, hey, we are tired of this knocking. Okay, come in and see this. That is the persistence in the things of the spirit. You persist, you persist, you persist until the door opens. You persist, you persist until a realm opens so that you go there. And when you go there, don't seek to come out. You stay there. You must function from there. Because who wants to go and see uh, sweet things, honey and all of that beautiful things set up and say, I'm coming back again. That is why when people get to a certain realm, when they are, their body is checking out of the earth and they see the glory, they don't want to come back into their body. They don't want to come back. Because what you see there is very beautiful. And most of the times, many don't want to return. They don't want to return. They want to stay there. So he says that there he received them. And he says, verse 9, Even Levi, who received tithe, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when he met Melchizedek. Now, this is where it is deeper. That even somebody in the loins of Abraham, in the father's genealogy, he was in the, he says in the loins, he says, in a way, we can say that he also paid unto the man. So they are qualified to take it. Now, the Bible says that this Melchizedek He's, uh, he's spoken a lot in the book of Hebrews. So we are going to learn something about him today, okay? We are going to see something about him. Now, let me start, let me come, let me bring you back to um, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And let's hear the role of the priests. 5 verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed. So is uh, those that we are take we take from the earth among men, they are they they appointed for is appointed for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He cannot have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so as for himself to offer sacrifice for sin. No man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God just as Aaron was. So it is nobody who can just rise and say that I am a high priest. You must be appointed. You must be called. It must be what God himself confessed on you. So Melchizedek, God confessed something because he was made like the son of God. Now, I will read further and I will, I will take time to say some things here. Okay. I hope I don't forget. Verse 5 says, So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are a priest, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, the scripture says that, Aaron's high priesthood, was not the preferred one. Such as Joshua couldn't give them rest. But when Jesus was coming, the Bible said there was nothing like priesthood that was mentioned concerning the tribe of Judah. There was nothing, okay, concerning the Judah as priest. But God Almighty is the one that has what appointed, has selected, okay, chosen Jesus to become the high priest. But it is not according to the order of uh, Aaron because it is not in that lineage or the order, but according to the order of Melchizedek, who was made like the Son of God. So his... High priesthood is not according to the one 
Aaron's high priesthood. But according to the one that Moses was made to see, the pattern that Moses was made to see to erect on the earth. So according to that order, and that man, the Bible says that he's a priest and also a king. He is a priest, both a priest and a king. And his, 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 it is witness that he what? He lives forever. It is witness that what? He lives continually and he remains a priest continually. So if we can say this, if we can say this as I'm teaching, if we can say this. First, there are things that we do not know. Many things we do not know in the heavens. Even the things that are on the earth, there are many things we do not know. So there are many things that we do not yet fully understand or know. And second is this. The man is a high priest. The Bible says he's a priest. He remains continually. Now, he's a king and a priest. And Jesus also came in that order. So Jesus is a king and a priest. Okay. Interesting. He's a king and a priest. So Jesus, in the Bible, we are, we are told that he's the Lord of lords and the king of kings. Jesus is the Lord of lords in the book of Revelation. And he's the king of kings. Is he only king, uh, king of kings that pertains to the kings of this earth? Because if Melchizedek is a king, then Jesus must be king of kings. So Jesus' kingship is, must be above Melchizedek, and he's in heaven. So then, he's king of kings of those in heaven and king of kings of those on the earth because Melchizedek, is to, we are told that he's a king. So he's the Lord of lords and he's a king of kings. So could it be that when God made all things, could it be, could it be, I'm, I'm, I'm making this uh, submission, okay? Could it be that when the Lord God Almighty made all things, he made some in heaven and some on the earth, and then the Christ, all of them, okay, heaven and the earth, and then when the Christ comes, he gathers all things in heaven and all things on the earth together in him, as Ephesians chapter 1 says. And that those in heaven submit to him, are subject to him, and those on the earth are also subject to him. Therefore, that is why he says that let his will in heaven, the will in heaven, be established on the earth. Because what is in heaven is what God wants to propagate or what he wants to establish on the earth. And now before the Christ was revealed, he, there was someone or um, another one made like the son of God who, who was given this shadow or who was given this kingship priesthood that jesus when he comes he shall become the preferred of all even the one in heaven and all the replica or the um, the shadow on the earth he he will be the preferred above all of them so when he's the king of kings then he's the king above melchizedek and he's the king above all the kings of the earth therefore understand what John came preaching? John the Baptist. For John the Baptist came preaching that repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Every kingdom has a king. And every kingdom has subjects. So when John came that repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, then John's assignment was also to reveal the king who is supposed to be the head of the kingdom. Because if you begin to talk about a kingdom, now who is the ruler of the kingdom? Who is the king of that kingdom? So the, the will and the plan of God is that the things in his kingdom will become established on the earth. That those who receive him must learn 
and must understand the things of royalty. They must understand the things of God. They must understand the things that pertain to their kingdom because they are kingdom. We are kingdom. So then if we are kingdom, we must know the things that pertains to our kingdom, not, the, not another kingdom because all the kingdoms of the earth shall become the kingdoms of our Lord. So if even if we learn of all the kingdoms Kingdoms, the diabolic kingdoms, at the end of the day, it is not going to benefit us. Our benefit is to know all things that pertains to the kingdom of God, the kingdom that we belong. All the kingdoms of the earth shall be given unto him. All the kingdoms of the earth shall be given unto him. And his, his kingdom will never end, the Bible says. That means kingdoms will end, but one kingdom will never end. That is the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It will never end. Kingdoms will end, but his kingdom will never end. I am coming at a point. I'm coming to a point, okay? I'm coming to a point. So repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I want to read Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. It says something from there. It says another profound thing there, which I want to share with you. I have about 30 minutes, okay? 30 minutes. I won't go too long today. Verse 11 says that, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priesthood arise according to the order of Melchizedek, not be called according to the order of Aaron? So that means the priesthood that was given to them was not unto perfection. But the one that is unto perfection is the one that Jesus will bring and will, will come with. Okay. And the verse 12 says, For the priesthood being changed of, the, of necessity, there is also a change of the law. So the priesthood which was established was given, was they set up according to a pattern in heaven. Because he says, whatever I show you, I want you to replicate. So it was according to a pattern. And the pattern there, there must be somebody that Moses might have seen, might have seen witness how they were giving, how they were worshiping God, how they had the message, how they had the temple. There must have been something Moses witnessed in order to replicate it upon the face of the earth. Are we going together? I hope no one is confused because I, I am trying my best not to help, uh, confuse anybody. Uh, so we are reading the scripture. I hope we are. Are we going together? Share with me if you are understanding. If if you are you are understanding something, we are, you are not confused. Okay. So for the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. So the priesthood has changed. It it was not God did not say it is done. To change means. We have not, it doesn't mean we have done away with, but the priesthood now is through the high priest, our high priest, who is Jesus Christ. And he is the one who will enact and bring the laws that govern the priesthood. Who anointed him? The Holy Spirit. He, he was anointed of the Spirit. It was not a man who poured oil. So the knowledge of the priesthood is in him. The instructions of the priesthood is in him. He is the, he is the pattern of everything. So everything is with Jesus Christ. And he came, and the Bible says, of whom, verse 13, for he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar, which is the tribe of Judah. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And yet, and it is yet far more evident, if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest. In the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest. I'm telling you, uh, uh, people of God, there are things in heaven that 
some of us, when we talk about it, eh, people will, people will imagine, and imagine things. You know, when the reason why uh, maybe sometimes I stop talking about some of these things is because some people were beginning to also imagine things and, you know, sending me messages to confirm something. So I said, okay, let me stop this one because uh, you don't want to help people sin against God. Because it's not by imagination. It's not by imagination, but by the Spirit of God. Now, there are things, have you, maybe some of you here might have experienced it, might, might have had something. When you are, you, you are in a place, in a vision, and then the one who is supposed to show you things or tell you things, they call your name. They don't ask you what is your name, but they, they call you, or you are going and they call you and they say, come. I want to show you A, B, C. You wonder, how did you know my name? They don't say anything. They will smile. So these are a realms or a, another dimension, a realm, where you yourself, you are surprised that somebody knows you. But we forget that we are naked before Jesus Christ. He knows all of us. And the Bible says that he, he has ministering spirit who ministers unto us. Okay, ministering spirit. Angels are ministering spirit. So, if Jesus Christ now is our high priest, then this high priesthood is, is, it, has, it has another level of not only responsibility, but the thing that pertains to it is far greater. Let me help you understand. In the Levitical priesthood, where Zacharias was ministering before the Lord, Angel Gabriel came there when he was offering incense, Gabriel stood there. Now imagine that that priesthood has been set aside and the priesthood of Jesus has kicked in. So imagine the kind of spiritual atmosphere when we are serving and worshiping Jesus, it happens. The angels who are present, because when Gabriel came, Gabriel came to minister to uh, uh, Zacharias. Gabriel ministered to Mary. So why should Christians be offended of angels ministering to us in our day? Why should, in, wasn't an angel who ministered to Philip? It was an angel of the Lord who ministered to Philip and told him to go to the Ethiopian man, to go to the desert. So imagine our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, who he says, I can, I can ask my father and he will send me what? Legions of angels. So he has legions of angels at his disposal. When Jesus was tempted by what? The devil, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says when Satan left him, the devil left him, Angels came to minister unto him. Angels came to minister unto him. Angels came to minister unto him. He is our high priest. He is our high priest of better things to come. He is our high priest who has come to give us the words of life. Who has come to show us the way. Who has come to bring perfection to us. And many of us don't believe or offended that his angels minister to us. But we are not offended that his, the angels of the Lord ministered to uh, uh, Daniel, ministered to Mary, ministered to Zacharias, from which we have come to understand even the messenger, uh, John the Baptist, and our Lord Jesus Christ who came. Where is the church at when it comes to these revelations? That is why if we are not learning much will not be given unto us because we are going to trample the pearls of God underfoot. We are going to destroy it. Imagine if this is some of the thinking of some of Christians that they are offended or they, are, they don't understand why. To say that, I don't understand what is the function of the Holy Spirit. Isn't the Holy Spirit the why are angels, why are angels ministering? That is, that is a class one lesson. Class one. Which we can't, we shouldn't discuss it today or discuss it. We should have known it a long time ago. Because Hebrews 1, the last verse of Hebrews 1 says, Angels are ministering spirit sent forth. Who sent them? Who sent angels? They are Hebrews 1. The last verse, verse 14. Are there no ministering spirits sent forth? Who sent them? Who 
God sends them, God Almighty, of course, He sent them to minister unto them who will inherit salvation. So imagine the high priesthood of Jesus. What comes with it? All those in the heaven now are at His disposal. They are all His servants. They are all his servants. He's the one that determines what you have to do because I am the great high priest. Everything is nullified. Whatever is on the earth is nullified. Now you come to me and I tell you what you must do. That is why all of them bow down to me. The Bible says he's the head of all principalities and powers. He is the one that is the boss of all things. He is the king of kings indeed. Kings or king of kings indeed. Verse 16, who has come not according to the law of fleshly commandment, verse 16 is profound. So, verse, let me read 15 and 16 again. And it is, far, it is yet far more evident, if in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of endless what? Life. According to the power of endless life. For he testifies that you were a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. I believe that. Okay, let me read to verse, um, verse 24. Verse 24. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, by he with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of better covenant. And there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has unchangeable word priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily, daily, as those high priests, to offer sacrifice for his sins and for the peoples. For, for this he did once for all, uh, when he offered himself. For the law appoints high priests, men who have weakness, but the word of oath, which came after the law, appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. This is the priesthood which we belong to. Many times, many people look at the former priesthood. And so we talk, we act, we behave as if we are under that for the Pope. But this one, we are under a high priest whose appointment came with an oath. And the Bible says he has been perfected forever by that sacrifice, he has been perfected forever. Now, if we are, we are sons of God, children of God, I'm going to share one or two last scriptures and then I will continue from there. We must understand that we are royalty. You and I must know that we are royalty. Just the understanding and the belief of it changes the way we see the world, changes the way we see things in the spirit, changes the way we relate with what one another changes the way we, 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 we see the devil when he comes against us, how we, we respond and how we act against him. It changes the way. Why so? Let me help you understand. So we belong to a kingdom. For John came preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in the book of Revelation, verse chapter 1 and chapter I think four or five, we hear something that is amazing. 
That's, that is amazing and we must look at it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Revelation 1. Let me start from 4. The Bible says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God. That is number one. Jesus has made us what? Kings and priests to his God. He has made us kings and priests to his God. Now, we, are, we belong to a kingdom. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, in the kingdom, he says that he has made us kings and priests unto his God. Now, if he has made us then we must also have a place of functioning. Where are we going to function? Where are we supposed to function as kings and priests unto his God? Is this now? Is it happening now? It must be happening now unto when? Or does it be, be, begin from a point, from a time which we have not yet entered? We have to let scripture help us. Now, he has made us kings and priests unto his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, let's go to Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 and 8 to 10. One of the elders, or the, 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 the elders, they began to make some statement or they began to say something which is truly profound. Um, and I want us to hear what they said. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the land, each having a harp, golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Okay. Out of the tr every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests unto our God, and we shall reign on the earth. So our place of reign or dominion, our place where we are going to function and reign, the Bible says, is on the earth. On the earth. Now Jesus has made us kings and priests. So he is also the king of kings. Even among us, he is the sovereign king, the supreme king. And he has made us to be kings also with him. But he is the Lord of lords and he is the king of kings. So when we come with Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the fulfillment of things, when he, he receives us to himself and we return with him, the Bible says we will reign on the earth with him. We are going to reign, as the 24 elders are saying, that he has made us kings and priests. Revelation 1 is telling us he has made us kings and priests, and we will reign with him. How is this possible? It is possible because the Bible says that we are heirs of God, and we are joined heirs with Christ. If we are joint heirs with Christ, then we reign with him. So then Romans chapter 8 verse 17 makes sense, which says that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with, with Christ. If we, indeed, if we indeed suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. Okay. I will end with this one. And I will, let me just wrap it with this one. We will continue this teaching. 
The Bible says that we are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. So when Jesus said, or the word of the Lord tells us that he has made us kings and priests, we should understand. He is the head. We are the body. So he is the sovereign, the supreme king. We are kings. He is the high priest. We are priests with him. And in the priesthood, if we, we can also be priests with him as our high priest, then it tells you and I that the priesthood has a structure. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Then the kingship also has a structure. Because he is the king of kings. So if you are king, that means you have a place of dominion. And the 24 elders revealed our place of dominion, place of reign, that it shall be on the earth. Then what is truly going to happen in the millennium? Now what is truly happening in our world today? Is, is the church called, ordained and called to walk about without defending the kingdom we belong to? No, we must actually have revelation of the kingdom we are part, which we will call reign with Christ as kings, because he's the sovereign and we are, we are, we are little kings, if I can say that. And he's going to be a high priest and we are going to be priests with him. So the church or the people, the body of Christ, the saint of the living God, must both understand or have revelation of priesthood, structure, understanding ordinances of priesthood. Because you cannot be a priest without understanding ordinances. Because priests offer things unto God. So what are we going to offer unto the Lord? So there must be understandings in priesthood and then the kingship. We must walk as royal, yet walking as men and women of God, men of the spirit, because his priesthood is not according to the fleshly ordinances, according to the fleshly what laws and commandments of men, but according to the spirit. So we must walk as men and women of the spirit. We must understand things of the spirit. The Bible says that spiritual things are what foolishness unto the carnal mind, foolishness unto them that are perishing, but for us who are kings and priests, the things of the spirit should not be foolishness unto us. We should not be, we should not close ourselves to the things of the spirit because we are priests. Every priest must understand what they are doing because a, a priest who does not understand what they are doing will suffer death. Just like the two sons of Aaron died because they did not understand what they were doing. They did not hallow God whom they have approached. They did not revere the Holy One whom they had come to minister to because they did not know they perished. So people who say they are Christians and they do not know where they function, they do not know and revere God that they serve, they will likewise perish. That is why we will have Foolish virgins on the face of the earth. These are the things that the children of God, the children of the living God, the elect of God must know and must understand. Otherwise, we will go about fooling ourselves, thinking we are doing Jesus a favor, but we are actually putting ourselves to damnation. We are actually sending ourselves to hell and to destruction. We must understand. You cannot be a high priest without understanding the instructions of service. Neither can you co-reign or be joined as with Jesus if you don't know the kingdom you belong to and what you do as a king, a, a royalty. Jesus understood his royalty. He says that it, it is expedient as I go, when I go, the Holy Spirit will come. When he comes, he will teach you all things. When Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, he says that, I have the power to kill you, power to release you. He says, you have no power over me. It is because of what I have to fulfill. That is why I'm standing here. And I have power or I can summon my father. I can call my father and he will summon legions of angels to defend me if I wish. That means the kingdom we belong to, we have access to angels. We have access because we are, he has made us to be kings and priests. We know that the time of the functioning of this thing shall be when he is revealed with us. But we know that 
since we are children of God, we have access to the Father, we can also sermon. But before we sermon, we must understand, have the instructions that governs the sermoning, that governs the, the kingship, that governs the what the priesthood, so that we can also sermon angels. We can also have understanding that we can sermon angels. If not, it says, I've seen a son, a royal, a child from the palace, a royal, who is walking and the servant or slave is on the horse riding. And he says, this is what? This is not good. This is error. So instead of us understanding our position, we do not. And then the sons of the wicked are understanding their positions in the spirit and our presence. The sons of the, the dark world who now have understood where they are in their kingdom of darkness, they are using that to oppress us. Meanwhile, we are, the, we are heirs of God and he has willed everything to us. What has he willed to us? He says, I will co reign with you on the earth and we are going to reign over all the kingdoms of the earth because all the kingdoms will become our lords and we are going to reign over all of them. So we must we must understand what Jesus has done for us and get the revelation from here and begin to walk in it so that the powers of the coming age will come upon us. The powers of the coming age, we will experience it though that age has not come. But the wind of that age, the power, of the wind of that power will blow over us. I'm telling you, I'm sure that that is the power that... <laughs> Was I careful? I have to be careful because... The, uh, our, there's a Nigerian man of God that I've seen trending that his powers are many. Hey, the, the guy is probably or the Nisabu bought millennium power. He's be, probably touching the millennium power <laughs> and bringing the names. And some of the names, only hmm, some of us, we are about to go to school for understanding power because we are pulling here. Hmm. If you don't know him, it's okay. Don't worry. I'm not going to mention any name here. So we must understand. We must have understanding. And all this thing doesn't come just a day. We are being built. That is what the Bible says. We must be built. We must what? Be built. We must be edified. We must grow into the head which is the Christ. So when we grow into the head, which is the Christ, then we grow in the knowledge, the understanding of the kinship, and the knowledge and the understanding of the priesthood. When we grow into the Christ, the Bible says we are not tossed about to and fro. Everybody knows their function and what they must do, what they must bring to the body for the body to reach that wholeness and that perfection. That is what we must get. That is what we must gather. But when we gather it, that is where we reign. That is where we are not afraid. The Bible says we take our stand, we clothe ourselves with the full armor, and we take our stand in the battlefield. We are not afraid of the devil. May God give us that grace in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God help us, his church, to walk with the revelation of our kinship to which we belong or to which we have been called and made and the revelation of what? The priesthood. As we have been called into and made, let the Lord grant us more revelation, the revelation of these things, revelation of the Son of Man, the Son of God, who is our Savior, our Redeemer. Let the Lord cause revelation to what? To be multiplied unto his people in the name of Jesus, that we will be perfected in knowledge, we will be perfected in understanding, we will be what? Built up in him without waiting to the left or to the right, but we will, be, we will stand stronger and stronger in Jesus Christ until the day of you is revealing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for someone, wherever you are watching me, 
Let the Lord empower you in the name of Jesus. This season, as you wait before the Lord, you seek the face of God. Let the Lord visit you. Let, his, let the Lord send his angels to visit you. Let his angels minister to you in visions and dreams. Let his angels minister to you in revelations. Uh, even in the visions of the day, in the name of Jesus, may you encounter our Savior, our Redeemer, and may he speak words no human ears have heard before. May he reveal to you where no human ear or eye have seen before. May you be taught by the holy ones of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let holy ones come to teach you. Let the Lord send his holy ones to teach us, to, in, to give us knowledge of the things we do not yet know in the name of Jesus. As we are speaking of these things, let that grace be given unto us. As many as are yearning, as many as are thirsty, and longing for these things, let it be granted unto you. I speak and I prophesy that grace is coming upon you. I speak and I prophesy understanding is coming into you. I speak and I prophesy revelation is your portion in the name of Jesus. Christ, you shall not lack revelation. You shall not lack in the name of Jesus. When you close your eye, you shall see. When you close your eye, you shall see the revelations of Jesus Christ. You shall hear the words of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the Lord empower your spirit. Let your spirit not slumber. Let your spirit be empowered. Let your spirit be made alive in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you are yearning and believing the Lord for, let it be granted that, that your joy will be full in Jesus' mighty name. We come against the works of darkness. We banish the work of that. We banish the works of darkness. We banish the agenda of the devil against your life. The arrows you have sent, we send it back onto them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak life. We declare life in Jesus' name. If you are sick, be healed. If you are sick, rise up. Be healed in Jesus' name. Infirmity be gone in Jesus' name. Let the hinge of the Lord touch you. Uh. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. Uh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh. For the Lord is raising a mighty people. An army of God who do not retreat. Uh. In the name of Jesus. Let that revelation come to you. Uh. Let that strength fall into you. Uh. In the mighty name of Jesus. And may Jesus Christ uh, our Lord. Uh, may he visit you and I. In this season, that whatever we have believed, whatever we are longing and yearning for, it will be granted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. On Tuesday, I'm going to talk to you about how authority throne, authority power is shared. It's in the Bible. As kings, because if Jesus is going to call, he's going to reign with us, we are going to reign with him, then he must share his authority or power with us. He must share it because if something has not been shared with you, you cannot reign. When um, Pharaoh shared his authority with Joseph, Joseph reigned as the second in command. He, he, he shared something with him. We are going to understand what is shared with God's people, God's servant, what Jesus shares with us. Not before the millennium or not in the millennium. Even now, what he shared, we has given to his body that we must know and understand so that we can walk in it. Malo patasadaha. I'm telling you, after when we finish this series, up, somebody you'll be sitting there and it looks like fire is you are burning. You as I'm burning here, it's like the Lord has set fire on you and you are burning. You will become a new man. You will be you will move in power, so much power like never before. In the name of Jesus. When the devils come, when they come, they will stop at your door and say, We cannot enter the door because the door is fire. The walls are fire. Mane mahasata. Let that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Let that be your testimony. When they come around you, they will see fire. You will be dwelling in the sea of fire. You will be surrounded with sea of fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this be your portion by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Because of time and because tomorrow is Sunday, I don't want to take so much time so that people can pray, can study, meditate, and uh, uh, be able to uh, do the church activities tomorrow. So we will come back again. I hope you have been blessed today. I hope you have received something. If it's your first time, uh, if you have not followed us, if you have not um, subscribed to our YouTube, subscribe, follow us. Uh, we won't send you any things that you don't have to worry about it. We're only gonna see, we're only gonna be doing videos, so only videos you get notifi notification of, and maybe if I make a post. But from today, since Facebook has banned me, 
uh, we are going to um, we are going to share from YouTube, and from here we are going to publish, and uh, we are even going to go further with YouTube. We are going to have our, our platforms. You see. Sometimes God wants us to act. He told me four years ago, four or five years, and I didn't really plan much, you know, other than getting this uh, YouTube. But uh, we are we are going to go further. I'm telling you, the Lord is going to bless us financially, resource wise, and we are going to go further. We are going to shame the devil. Uh, the devil is going to be actually very sad that he did this. Everything that he does, the Lord has already responded already. So God bless you. Thank you for following us. Uh, keep sharing, and we will come to you on Tuesday. Tuesday is going to be full blown. I'm sure that by Tuesday we would there will be fire, 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 fire. We are going to talk about some things. It will cause somebody's inner spirit to jump out of their body. You may be searching for your spirit afterwards. In the name of Jesus. But let's keep praying. Um, I, I, I was sent a message that. Uh, there's fireworks going in Israel right now uh, by Iran because of uh, what Israel did to the uh, uh, embassy in Syria. The world wants third world war. They want to bring us to Zechariah chapter 12, the prophecy. So that is why, you see, anytime God is working, the enemy will also start doing things in the, uh, physically. So may we not be um, sidetracked but may we see what Jesus is doing in the spirit. It has begun. What he is doing has begun. So also align yourself from tonight. Stay and meditate. Pray. Begin it. You will see. You will delve into revelations. You will experience things. Some of you, you will wait to share some things with me. I'm praying for everyone who, who will be doing that. I'm praying that Jesus, whatever he reveals, let it also spread unto his people. Let him multiply unto his people, that his people will be blessed in Jesus' name. We are preparing, we are planning, and we are ready to execute what Jesus has uh, given unto his people. This season is a season of revelation. So uh, move in revelation, and God will put you above all our enemies. God bless you all. I love you, and we are going to connect uh, willing uh, soon, God will on Tuesday. Have a blessed night. Bye-bye.